The Ghanaian Times, NCA 4 million financial loss case, three former appointees jailed 16 years. And Ghana's COVID-19 case rise to 5,127. Ten areas declared hot spots. Auditor General found guilty of contempt. President Kufuado commissions new Douala barracks at Burma Camp. The Finder newspaper, soldiers get new houses, more nearing completion as part of barracks regeneration project. President Akufuado declared yesterday three jailed over $4 million MCA uh, fraud as anti-corruption fight takes charge. Domelevo found guilty of contempt in Osafu Mafos $1 million crawl case. Cabinet retreat. Government prioritizes health, roads, and industry. COVID-19 infections spike at Obwasi, and they are calling for a, a curfew. Uh, the uh, Madame Faustina, that's the uh, DC. She's calling for a curfew. Will, will she be heard? Well, your guess is not as good as mine. The Daily Guide. Domelovo guilty of contempt. Bafo Boni, Tevi, and Osman jailed 16 years in NCA trial. COVID-19 cases soar. And I'll be fair to all nominees, to all, according to uh, nominee Yoni Kulendi, who's been billed to go to the Supreme Court, hopefully cleared by Parliament. December elections will come on, um, government. And daily graphic, 4 million US dollars NCA scandal. Buffo Boni, Tevi, Alaji Osman jailed. Court orders confiscation of their assets worth some three million or so uh, dollars. And Professor Mensah Bonsu Kulemdi sealed through vetting the, uh, not the fate of uh, the, uh, Justice um, Honyanuga hangs in the balance as the minority is thinking and says that, well, let's go to the plenary. Domelovo found guilty of contempt. Vice President launches integrated ICT system for mass lock. And finally, on the BNFT front page, Vice President launches integrated ICT system for mass lock. Telcos, fintechs to follow gifts in reintroducing fees on Momo transactions. High seas illegal, fuel trade rising. Maritime authority seeks to uh, power to seize, destroy these boats. State losing revenue as environment gets polluted. And Ghana, COVID-19, not an excuse for co uh, government to stay to overstay its first term. I guess this morning is the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Ningo Pram Pram constituency in the Greater Accra region, the Honorable Sam George Nate Jata. Uh, Sam, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well. A very good morning to you and your viewers. Absolutely. And the Honorable Yao Bwabie Samwa is the Member of Parliament for the Adentan constituency in the Greater Accra. Also, he is the Director of Communications of the NPP. Also, welcome. Good morning. Thank you. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well. Great. Let's let's get straight into it. The uh, cabinet had a three-day retreat, and they are telling us what their priorities are. Yesterday, the Minister for Information mentioned. I'll quickly read to you on page five of the Finder newspaper. Where it says, "Government has given assurances that despite the impact of the novel coronavirus on the country's economy, health, roads, industry, and other sectors still remains on its priority list." Minister for Information, Kojo Pongkroma, who disclosed this yesterday at a press briefing in Accra, said President Kufado has tasked the Minister for Finance to put together a recovery program and submit same to the nation through Parliament after prior approval of Cabinet. The program is to outline how fiscal expansion can assist specific sectors of the economy to achieve a rebound. This quote says, despite the expected hits across all sectors, priority is to be maintained on the following health roads education food and agriculture social protection institution and industrial growth as well as security he added the outbreak of the novel coronavirus has impacted negatively on our economy and the global economy we all know uh, honorable let me start with you council why why would government focus on these areas uh, it mentions health um, roads education food and agriculture social protection, import substitution, and industrial growth. These are seven areas this government is focusing on. Thank you. Let me uh, first say a very good morning to Ghana, mm -hmm. the world, and the government, mm -hmm. especially His Excellency the President, the Vice President. Of course, my constituency, 
at any time constituency. Don't forget, I'm yet to be voted on. I'm still running a primary. <laughs> So my greetings to my. You, you didn't tell me the last time when your primaries are due. So no, it's not due yet. We are all uh, hung up on COVID, which is the other thing I want to stress before I mm. give my remarks that COVID is real. Mm. If you realize that an individual can impact so many people, and we are seeing the examples in Obuasi from the market, mm. we are seeing it mm. in so mm. where one person is supposed to have gone to five nightclubs mm. and has. Imp we reignited the whole thing when Seal thought it was under control mm. in Wuhan as well. So let's take it serious. Okay. Let's observe the protocols. Mm. The protocols are mm. important mm. because life must still go on. Absolutely. The protocols that can ensure mm. that we stay uh, on board. Mm. Uh, now, all the priority areas are socially mm. inclusive mm. and create jobs. Those are the key things that mm. you are looking at inclusiveness because we are a society where clearly <laughs> there are too many people who may fall through the cracks if you simply allow us to go on. so you have health and it couldn't have come out better uh, with the president realizing what was at stake with the covid issues mm. and he coming out with agenda 88 uh, mm. agenda 88 within health implies that you are seeking a skilled healthy population mm -hmm. and you're also creating jobs for the medical mm -hmm. sector. Mm -hmm. So it's a major investment. Then, of course, roads open up any country. Mm -hmm. If you travel this country, you realize that many, many towns along road arteries, highways, have become serious commercial towns because mm -hmm. roads pass through them. So roads enable commerce. Mm -hmm. They enable interaction. They enable people mm -hmm. to get up and engage. Mm -hmm. so, so roads are critical, very, very important. It also mm -hmm. impacts health and education mm. because people have to go to school people have to travel it impacts tourism mm. it is a leveler mm. roads impact the entire economy and and again it creates jobs okay as you invest in roads you create construction you create jobs you create incomes yes and then of course the bottom line is industry and a great mm. where you can have some real jobs mm. being created as you expand industry mm. and value add now with covid we are mm. saying that Ghanaian industry can be geared towards serious domestic production. Mm. The kinds of production we are seeing in PPEs and sanitizers and otherwise. So you can imagine if we get a grip on our post-harvest production mm. through 1D1F, mm. where majority of the industries are focused on agricultural uh, value addition, if we'll be able to process our food mm. and get an additional 40% of value out of what we are getting now, mm -hmm. it will be a game changer as far as industry well, is concerned. When will this be? That's the question. But that's why you're prioritizing. You prioritize to invest. After COVID-19. When, when a government prioritizes. After COVID-19. Yes. But even during COVID-19, even if you want to prioritize and invest, you are investing more on health and social purposes to alleviate the impacts of COVID-19. Mm. So, so you, 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 you shape your investments mm -hmm. to deal with the immediate situations. And now it's a health crisis. The health crisis has associated social consequences mm. and it has impact on the economy. Mm. So you are creating a situation mm. where you have a stimulus going and then you have social alleviation going through electricity, water and all those things. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Huh. Then you are investing in actual health frontline workers and all that. That is dictated by COVID-19. Mm. But post-COVID-19 and even as we go mm. forward, you have to be reshaping. Mm -hmm. And industry is already reshaping mm. because mm. we will eat. <laughs> During COVID, we will eat. Mm. So you have to reshape there. And whilst we are uh, 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 eating, like I said, you are turning industry around to producing local, locally, PPEs mm. and certain things. You are creating a certain level of self-reliance. Mm. Now, your post-COVID, you are going to deepen that. You are going to deepen that because that's where you create jobs. So the initiatives in bauxite, mm. the initiatives in iron and steel, mm. other initiatives, coming on board. You, you have had revenue slips. The economic uh, situation has been disrupted. Where do we hope to rake in revenue to, for example, kickstart this? Because COVID has placed everything, put everything haywire, made everything haywire. That is why the ongoing conversations are critical and have started early. On the sidelines of COVID worldwide, mm. there are conversations going out about how the international financial order should be structured. You are aware mm. that initially there's been some sort of debt holdout 
Right. And now, African ministers, mm -hmm. African finance ministers are discussing how to position themselves mm. in a new era of financials. Now, rating agencies mm. have been asked to suspend their traditional mode of operation mm. because it doesn't reflect the truth. The truth is that COVID-19 has wiped out a lot of economies. Not traditionally. We are not in normal times. And beyond COVID-19, it will not even be back to where we were. Mm. to be a new normal. So the terms of the international financial order mm. and the new normal mm. are being negotiated as we speak. Mm. Because America and other countries, Germany and others who have a basis and have a standing based on their currency issues and mm. are investing massive amounts mm. deficit financing to stimulate the economies okay. we must benefit from that mm. we must also benefit from deficit financing on a scale that suits our economies because these investments <laughs> we are making now have been forced on us by covid we are diverting <clears throat> investments towards certain areas that were not expected the symptoms of the economy is the health of the people if the people are healthy they pay taxes yeah but you have sustains to sustain the economy that's why even Paying taxes means they have to be doing something. Absolutely. Now so they if, can't so do if, much. They, if they die... That's they, what I mean. But now they can't do much. Mm. So you have to keep them alive. That's why the president led the way in the world when he said that we can't bring people back to life. Mm. But we can bring the economies back to life. So invest everything you have in keeping the people alive. Mm. But after those investments, you have to bring the economy back. So now the discussions about how do you bring the economy back. And you mm. asked about revenue. Mm. I'm saying that if the people are not working, mm -hmm. revenue is down, your traditional products are down, the cost of your traditional products, mm. the sale value, oil, oil is down mm. in, in the numbers that they are because people are not moving back and forth. Right. So every commodity is down, but you need to reflect an economy. Mm. An economy is based on trade, value mm -hmm. addition and trade. So you have to invest in revitalizing trade. And that means you have to find the money from somewhere. Okay. Those are the discussions going on. Okay, now. so all of this is supposed to culminate into a recovery plan that the president has directed yes. uh, the finance minister to put together. That's right. Are they working at this plan at this point? Uh, when are we to get absolutely. this plan done? Absolutely. Absolutely. They are working locally and they are working internationally. Local solutions are not enough. COVID has demonstrated how close the international community really is. Local solutions cannot engage you and keep you alive externally. Mm -hmm. So it's an integrated thing. So they are working on local. Locally, they are investing in health, they are investing in roads, they are going to invest in industry and are great. Mm. IT is cross-cutting. We are moving towards that era. Mm. Social distancing demands that post-COVID, the new normal will be more IT. Mm. They are investing in that as a cross-cutting thing. And of course, security is also cross-cutting. Security covers virtually everything. Mm. So, so all these things are areas where that new plan mm. will focus on. So there's a frame. But to get that plan functional locally, mm. you need international integration. Okay. Because it's a, the world economy is financial flows back and forth. That means we're going to borrow. I'm saying that in the new world we are facing mm. now, even borrowing, the terms of borrowing will change. That's what uh, I'm how saying. How so? Because it's a new normal. We, we cannot borrow based on indices of yesterday. Mm. Yesterday, they will look at your uh, 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 well, deficit level mm. and say that because you have a deficit, you have to break down. You don't have to invest in certain sectors. You have to build up your capacity and all that. The conditionalities that we are used to the IMF giving us, those things will change. Okay. Because now budget deficits are needed to reflate economies worldwide. Mm. So the terms of borrowing will change naturally. Mm. You, you cannot have the old system where your capacity to borrow and reflate your economy will depend on your uh, 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 debt to GDP mm. ratios and whether or not your deficit is high or low. Mm. Every country in the world, including the countries who enforce deficits, mm. are going into deficit financing mm. to reflate their economies. Everything has changed. But, but, then, but no in terms income. of security, then, mm. we will be looking at the job losses that will come. The ILO is projecting that some 2.7 billion jobs will be lost across the world. In Ghana, we have already started hearing TUC, the hospitality industry, many other sectors crying. Now, uh, how prepared are we for them? And this will be my final thing, and I'll go to some. 
how prepared are we for them in all of this plan where, we, where do we position people who have already been asked to go home either with no salary or have taken salary cuts or are working but are not too sure when their bread is coming to them how that, are we positioning that, them in this that plan? that is the biggest challenge of the worldwide economy because as COVID has locked us down, mm. literally, we are, social distancing means even production is at 50%, 40%, because mm. you have to distance people on the factory floor. It means people, there is redundant labor. Right. How do you pay people who are redundant? That is why you need deficit financing to mm. reflate economies. Okay. Either to beef up the existing ones, provide a safety net, mm. or to engage in new industries. So already in Ghana, okay. there are major steps that have been taken. GRE example, has mm. published a tax rebate schedule. Mm. Have you noticed that? The, the hospitality industry says uh, they are asking for more. Yeah, yeah. But at least something has started. GRE has published a tax rebate schedule. It's in your newspaper. They, they, they want it to be implemented. They don't just want it to be published. Like a 600 million stimulus package. You have to the have 3 to. billion soft loan with six months moratorium uh, from the banks. They want those ones implemented ASAP. I not just happy. to be told. I am happy. You are mentioning them. Okay. Because if you don't conceive it, mm. you can't implement it. But it's been long. Ah, it's no. been two, two weeks since the president announced oh, that. But do you mean that the day is announced is, is disbursed? It has to be established and disbursed transparently. How long do they wait? I am expecting that technical people, including the fact that the, the, the retreat has re-emphasized the need for shoring up employment. Mm. I, like I said, all the initiatives are about employment. I'm expecting that the finance minister drives the process and gives direction how long do they wait That's i am not in a position to determine length of time but mm. everybody now everybody now is in a measured hurry okay. because we all don't know exactly what's going to happen we don't even know how much more investment we have to make into COVID okay. control you understand okay don't even, but the initiatives have been announced the president said that the the one the 600 million mm. will be disbursed uh, 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 in May. Mm -hmm. So we are in May. Mm -hmm. We are expecting to see the disbursement framework and structures. Okay. Don't forget that the receivers are also disbursing money mm -hmm. on the banking sector. As well. So there's some streams of money coming in there. Okay. And then the banks who have come together mm -hmm. are banks who already have a framework for lending. Now they have to change their style and look at moratorium periods, lower interest rates mm. and all that. The expertise is within the banks. Okay. So the important thing is to accept the principle okay. that we are extending a soft feather to this area. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let uh, Sam come in. Sam, th these are the areas that cabinet after the three-day retreat is looking at. Uh, health, uh, they're looking at social protection, agri education, and uh, in import subsidization, uh, substitution, I beg your pardon, industry growth. Are these your priority areas as well, from what you said? And Yao has been explaining to us that post-COVID, the challenges will come, and that is why that conversation started today. Are these your priority areas? Well, let me say a very good morning to our viewers. Mm -hmm. The good morning, Gopram Pram. Let me use this opportunity to celebrate all frontline health workers mm. in the country. Yesterday was International this Nurses the, Day. Right. Um, to the doctors, the nurses, the lab technicians, everybody, mm. ambulance drivers, cleaners in the hospital, mm. everybody on the front line, security personnel, we celebrate you mm. and we appreciate the work you're doing for this country, for Mother Ghana at this time, putting yourself and your families at risk. Mm. Johnny. You have a government that is essentially engaged in sound bite governance. Simple. Really? I mean, most of the things that you, you hear government say to you are fantastic for the news. Mm. But when it comes to implementation and the reality on the ground, you, you realize that there, there's a huge disparity between what was said and what the reality is. For example? And I'm, I'm going to come in there. Okay, when, when, and, and I'll start from the, the whole mantra of Ghana Beyond Aid and, and, and how much noise has been made about that and mm. how that has been posited. But half of Lawyer Samoa's submission was on how government is going to go externally mm. to borrow. Okay, don't forget that Ghana Beyond Aid was touted by the president. We saw all kinds of razzmatazz and pomp and pageantry around about Ghana mm. Beyond Aid. And Ghana Beyond Aid stemmed from another soundbite that the president had given that yet to Sikano so and so come the year. Mm. The money is supposed to be here locally. Dr. Baumia told us he had been the deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana. He knew where the money was. Mm. Now we're being told that that economy that is Ghana Beyond Aid already, don't forget, has already run to the 
IMF for a rapid credit facility mm. of one billion mm. US dollars. We have been told that everything that we are going to see, everything that we are being promised, is going to be on the back of foreign funding. But I mean, every, everybody has been hit across uh, the world. Well, well, not everybody is going foreign funding. Those who didn't do razzmatazz and hold kinky parties to celebrate all kinds of, all kinds of things mm. are not going beyond the assurance. They are looking internally and generating the revenue internally. Okay, so when you paint a picture, that's why I said it's about it's about sound bites. It's about mm. saying the nice things, but the reality is different. I'll give you another sound bite. Okay, we know how to bring back the economy, but we do not know how to bring back Ghanaian lives. What are your doubts about so. it? The president of the republic. Well, yesterday the finance minister told us that when the president said he listened to the science to lift the lockdown, mm. it's not true. The president listened to the economy. The president doesn't know how to bring back the economy. The finance minister speaking at the Flagstaff House yesterday. Mm said that the lockdown was lifted after three weeks because the economy of Ghana could not sustain more than three weeks of lockdown. I spoke with Kojo here. He says that was not an economic decision. It was by, backed by... Kojo Ponkuma is not the finance minister. But he this is the finance... Government. No. This, he is not the finance minister. Mm. When it comes to issues of the economy, I will take what the finance minister says over what the information minister okay, says. So the information minister is spin doctor. He's a spin doctor for government. Now listen to what the finance minister said. The finance minister said... The finance minister, speaking at the Flagstaff House yesterday, said, when you look at what happened during the lockdown, it was quite clear after a point that given that 90% of our population is informal and they go out each day to earn wages, it became increasingly impossible to continue with such a policy. This was the president, speak, the, the, the finance minister, oh, the speaking. He said, and, and it's a story on City Business News. It says, Finance Minister Ken Furiata has admitted that it was impossible for government to continue the partial lockdown imposed on Accra, Tema, Kaswa, and Kumasi beyond the three weeks announced by President Akufado. According to him, the Ghanaian economy, which is largely informal, cannot sustain that decision beyond the three weeks. This is the man in charge of your purse. Mm. Do you want to believe the, the exchequer, the man in charge of the purse, or you want to listen to the linguist? When it comes to issues of what is in the press, I'd listen to the man who controls the press. Mm. And so, when the president gave flowery speeches and said that we know how to bring back the economy, well, he was just he was just playing to the gallery. He was not speaking the truth. He was not telling us the reality. And that's why I say this government is a government of soundbites the, 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 because the, the finance minister telling us mm. that our economy cannot go beyond three weeks of a lockdown points to the fact that this economy is not as resilient as we were told it is. Now, when it goes to the three thematic but, areas... But we are paying for things, Sam. We are paying for things that we didn't budget for. So, for example, we're feeding 400,000 people daily. Uh, 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 again, that's, that's, that's oh, question. Oh, hold on for me. So, I'm, I'm giving you the details as we're told. We're giving free water, free electricity. There are a lot of freebies that are running around. We didn't plan for all of those ones. COVID came and we had to make provisions. So... Literally, a budget has been set aside, and we're making new expenditure. We don't have the government some slack. Johnny, you see, you see, when people make this, this, this argument, mm. it's laughable. You know why? Why? Because during the, the period that we've locked down, government, if we were in normal times, government would have been making expenditure on other items that government is not making during the COVID period. Mm. Okay? So it's, it's easy for you to look at one side of the coin and not look at the flip side. That, yes, government is making new expenditure, but old projects that should have been going on have all stalled. Financing is not going on on it. Okay? So what is happening to that funding? The bottom line is, when you net out government's expenditure, has government been spending more? No. The bottom line here, the bottom line here for me is this. When you talk about 400,000 400, people, mm. feeding 400,000 people where? With what? We saw, didn't you see the feeding mm. going on? I mean, I mean, I mean, Johnny. The, 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 we, we, we are waiting for Parliament to reconvene and we would ask government to come and account and let us know what the distribution of that 400,000 people is. Who and who were fed? Where mm. were they fed? We would, account, we would ask for accountability. But you see, when, when today... Mm. And you see, it's interesting, eh? That the whole gamut of what Cabinet has come out with, which Lawyer Samoa has tried to push out here, mm. has to do with infrastructure. And he's positing how that is... How, how government inf investment in infrastructure, be it in roads, be it mm. in healthcare, or be it in industries, is going to boost the economy, how it is a social intervention. Well, let me just draw his attention to the fact that the track record I of the man... I did a social oh, intervention. Oh, oh, you no, did. No, 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 you did. Import stabilization. Yeah, mm. I said social support. Okay. We are also focusing 
and invest in social. Okay. So I didn't say that social social protection intervention. I didn't say that. Okay. So you so infrastructure is a social intervention. Okay. Point one. But, but, but what some some is saying is that <laughs> you are hinging the progress of uh, the future. On these things, jobs are not social. And, 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 now, now, let me let. Oh, we are oh. Allah, 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 speaking. Allah, 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 because you are seeking to reflect. No, what so I just, say. just get a pen and paper. I have, I have a pen and paper. Accurate. Get a pen and paper. Go forward if you are not accurate. So, so, I, 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 I could have interjected. I didn't counsel. Counsel. I could have interjected several times. I'll give you. I'll give you a rebuttal. So please. Because I could have interjected several times. Thank you. I just want to state what the records are. Okay. Because we're going into an election where we're going to be comparing records. John Dramani Mahama's four years and Nanado's four years. If today you are telling me that Nanado is showing proper leadership because he's going to be investing in infrastructure, let's look at what the track records in terms of capital expenditure on infrastructure as a percentage of GDP of John Mahama for four years. In 2013, we spent 3.9% of our GDP as capital investment or for capital expenditure. In 2014, another 3.9%. In 2015, we spent 4%. In 2016, we spent 4.6% of our GDP as capital expenditure. Now, this is Nanado's track record. In 2017, he spent 3.1%. Mm. In 2018, 1.6%. In 2019, 1.5%. And this year, he had scheduled a plan to grow to, to spend 1.2% mm. of, 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 of GDP as infrastructure. Nanado's best performance was in 2017, 3.9%. 3.1%. John Mahama's worst performance was in 2013 and 2014, 3.9%. Don't forget, in 2013, mm -hmm. where we're spending 3.9% of, of, of our GDP as capital expenditure, they wasted eight months of our time blocking all FDIs but, but with the frivolous court case. Cuts. And so, and so, their, their, and their taxes so no, no, no. <laughs> you, see, you see, Johnny, the bottom line here mm -hmm. is that when you today want to tell us that hospitals and roads are important act actions to take mm -hmm. to govern a country, I'm saying to you, that what you have dedicated to this over the past four years mm. pales in significance to what the man we are going to be contesting again, the next president of Ghana, if has get, done if I, get cabinet, if I get cabinet right, they are saying that an amalgamation of uh, sectors or a composition of sectors is what they are looking at to recover from the deadly Johnny, impact all, of all I am doing, All I am doing is giving your listeners and your viewers health, roads, industry, and, I mean, they were very, very emphatic. And, uh, and, and, and all of this are, are, are seen as capital expenditure. Right. And I'm, all I'm doing is giving your viewers the opportunity to see what President Akufuado offers and what's the alternative. President John Dramani Mahama, which to the NPP is a scary alternative because of the, mm. the credible track record he brings. Mm. And I'm just giving you the track record. Now, when you want to talk about importance of roads, today, Laura Samoa is telling us about how roads open up economies. Well, it was John Dramani Mahama who had that vision. And you, you need to look this at the This year is the year of roads. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Where were the roads? Look at it. You, I'll give you one typical example. There's no the road in Lingo Pram Pram that's oh. under construction. Chief. No, sorry. Um, I just want to I know. I the Wenya Road. Okay. Ask the minister when they are going to construct it. Okay. I've asked four questions in parliament on it. I've been giving four deadlines. I'll give you, mm. you understand me? I'll give you a typical example of what John Mahama did with roads. Fufusu Solar Road. Every community along that road... Mm -hmm. Over 42 communities. Each one got either a chips compound, mm. got a, a, with, with, complete with nursing quarters, or got a school, or got boreholes. Look at the 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 the, the uh, Kaswa interchange. Mm. Came with a polyclinic. Came with came with with with, with a school building. We understand the, the the economics of roads and how roads are seen as integrated economic developers and drivers for communities. Government is giving businesses when you talk about 600, agenda, 600 million. Johnny, uh, yes, Johnny, package, Johnny, Johnny, sound bite. Three billion. Johnny, sound bite, sound bite, sound bite. Look, listen, the industry is acknowledging listen, it. Why do you say it's sound bite? Because I'm just saying, do a simple mathematics. They say 200,000 businesses are going, to, uh, are going to benefit from it. Right. Do a, a simple mathematics. 600 million divided by 200,000. That comes to 3,000 on the average. That's the average figure. Okay? Mm. Now, for most of these SMEs, if you talk to them, most of them, their capital, operating capital is between 10,000 and, and 50,000. Okay? Many of them have wiped out their, their, their capital. Mm. So when you're giving someone who was operating with about 20,000, 3,000 cities. Are you restoring him to I'm giving you a, a, a loan now, from the bank now, with six and again, and again, Johnny, it is, it, is not, it, is, time. it is not necessarily about how free, much, free, free, free time or not. What you are giving to me, 
will it be able to help me go and get back my, my, my operating goods or the goods I used to operate? If I used to buy goods worth 20,000 mm. to be able to turn around my business, and now you're bringing me 3,000 on the average, do you have you restored me to where I am? That's the question you need to ask. On the Agenda 88, and again, sloganeering. Mm. They've already coined a slogan for it, Agenda 88. Today they are talking about health infrastructure. When Joe Muhammad was building the, 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 the New Ridge Hospital, what did President Akufado say? He said it was bloated. Who has he taken to court for that? He said it was the price was inflated. That's the question he said. Wait for it Today, to come. Wait for it to come. The crown, the crown, they've been in government for how many years? Three years and five months. What have they found on that project? Nothing. Nothing. Okay? Nothing has been found on it. All you end up you end up seeing is that the project that everybody knew Joe Muhammad had finished, the Minister for Health mm. went and took off the plaque that had John Muhammad's name and put his own a new plaque with his name that he commissioned which the Ridge Hospital. That? The Ridge Hospital. The Ridge Hospital. The current Minister for, for Health. Honorable yes, Kukwajima went there and cut me and, and put a new plaque that he is the one who commissioned Ridge. This is reality. This is fact. I'm not running away from it. They can run away from it. Okay. On the last thing Rather about, from, uh, about yeah. expansion of local production capacity. Mm. Today, hmm, you're talking about local production of PPs. Are we not talking about hydro hi, uh, hydroxychloroquine or whatever that right. drug mm. and trying to ask it companies has, like tobinko right. yes like tobinko and ns chemists to, to produce it locally right why is tobinko and ns chemists in that position because john damani mama did not need sloganeering to give them 50 million dollars worth of government money as stimulus as far back as 2014 where he gave the next the next the next pharmaceuticals mm. which is the one of the leading producers of antiretroviral drugs in africa Give them money to improve and expand their production line so that they could start exporting ARVs into the rest of Africa. Tobinko Pharmaceuticals got support from the government of Ghana of, under John Dramani Mahama. NS Chemist. Today you see that NS Chemist has sprung up, up uh, uh, retail shops all over the I world. All over the country. In, in all of that was I investment that in, from I the John Dramani Mahama. In 2017, uh, Kenneth Ferreta announced some release for these pharmaceutical companies. Uh, for them to be able to produce locally. I think about 50% slash of their taxes to be able to produce. That's good. You, you give them 50% slashing on their taxes. Mm. Fantastic. But when the man who set the ball rolling, who actually gave them the money that they've used to expand, Tobinko needed at the time. Mm. NS Chemist or Tobinko, one of them, needed $10 million to set up a okay. new state-of-the-art production facility. They got that money from government. Okay. That money that they got has helped them to expand their production such that when you give them a 50% slash, you boost, you boost their production. Thank so you. today, when we are talking about the things that your cabinet thinks are novel, mm. and that we must, we must roll out the red carpet and hold a kinky or watchy party for you, somebody did them without pump and pardon. Thank you. Because that's what he was voted for. Council. And he will come back to complete it. Council, take your two minutes and yeah. some will take it. I want us to, yes, I want us to <laughs> switch topic. I yeah, but, but it can't go all like No, that's, that, that would be a rebuttal. Yeah, if not, if not, if not we are spending correct inconsistency. If, if not, we are spending all the time on one topic. Ghanaians are listening to us. Okay, manage your time well. So I'm saying two, I'm saying two minutes. Governance. I'm saying two minutes. We're starting well, at forty-one. I would prefer to set the record straight than to come on another topic. Governance okay. is not just about infrastructure. Mm. Governance covers politics, social, economic spheres. Mm. Two, the NDC in total have been in power for twenty-seven years. And if in 27 years we are still talking about an economy that hasn't been restructured mm. compared to the entire MPP having been in power for less than 13 years, mm. and then the NDC has Where are you calculating the 27 years from? Including the PNDC and everything. We Do imagine the dishonesty of the argument. You say on, you hold want hold to set the record straight. So, hold on for me. As the NDC, how old is from 92 to now? I don't need to do my job. I beg you. As you mean, you didn't cut out the PNDC yet. Okay. How many years is that? So 1992 mm -hmm. up until now. Mm -hmm. How many years? You know, been? you tell me. You said you're setting a record straight, so you tell me. They had two terms. Right. That's eight. And years. another two terms. Right. That's, that's 16, 16 years. years. Right. Okay. Good. Now, what has happened? Mm. What is happening now? What's the flip side? We are hearing. <laughs> we are hearing mm. that John Mahama, having been involved in government for two years as vice president, and four years is the one who created everything in Ghana. Again, another infrastructure. Oh, yes. Allow us to, 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 to set the record down. Some of the vice president for two years. Some of the vice president for two years. Please, please, please. Yeah, yeah, hold on. I will not ask you. Yeah, hold on for me. 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 Hold on for me
Yeah, yeah, no, no, don't follow his first. So I want you to follow. I beg you. I beg you. Please, 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 please not. Are you going to Yes, him? I'm managing him. Manage him. Yes. Both of you. You're managing both of you. Both of you. Both of you. Both. Yeah. Slow down. So some some economic the economic debate. Some you you will you will wait and note your rebuttals if you have any. And I restrained him to hold himself. So I I beg you. So gentlemen, I beg you. Please. The economic debate is not about who shouts the loudest. It's not about who abuses the most. Mm. It's about practical reality and records. Says your slogan here. That's what he assumes. But the people of Ghana are feeling the impact of what we do. Mm. What we had to contend with was that having given a healthy economy in 2009 mm. to the NDC, of which for eight years, John Mahama was a major part as government official, as vice president, running through to another four years as president, he handed over an economy that had dropped from a peak of 14% mm. growth due to oil found for him mm. by 2011 to 3.9%. Don't all governments say that, uh, new governments say that we're, we're, the economy we met is empty? Is Was it a fact that the macro indices put growth at 3.9% in mm. 2016? Mm. It was a fact. Wasn't it a fact that the financial sector had collapsed? It was a fact. Wasn't it a fact that there was doom so to the extent that at some point, it's a calculated we were losing zillions of dollars? Mm. It's a fact. I Is it not a fact? My friend Baumia says doom so had been solved in Is the early days of uh, the Kufaro led government. Yes, but what I'm saying is that he's talked about <laughs> your Mahama led mm. economic revolution, which didn't exist. In his legacy. I am saying that Ghanaians are the beneficiaries and direct feel directly the impact of economies run by Nanado mm. and run by John Mahama. Okay. What John Mahama bequeathed Ghanaians that they remember him most for was a debilitating doom song. But you have gotten more oil Killed revenues. Their businesses. You have got oil, more oil revenues than him. Very well. Killed their businesses. Was oil revenue about doom song. Mm. Well, he chose to sign PPEs for which we are paying now. He mm. chose to sign uh, uh, PPAs, PP, PPS, okay. take or pay PPAs for which we have had to pay as at last year a billion dollars a year in capacity we are not absorbing. In which, in which That's sector? what he left in, us with. In, in the energy, energy. Okay. That's what, that, that was how he managed to solve them. So by leaving us a debt crisis, literally, because he misdirected his efforts. Instead of focusing on running the equipment, he rather chose to invest in capacity. But we have free electricity Because that is now. where you could sign contracts. Mm. If it was your mama in charge, the electricity would be gone. Really? We are running the economy properly. That is why the electricity is on. But the infrastructure is the that same. That is why we are able to pay the, PP, uh, the PPA mm. bills mm. that mm. he left us mm. and still be able to give away free electricity. But the, the infrastructure remains the same. Do you know how much money we've wasted in paying their debts? How much? Look at the financial sector alone. Mm. Between 13 to 23 billion cities mm. spent on reshaping the financial sector. That day collapsed. And Jomama was aware. He came and told Parliament that he had supervised the irresponsible growth of large mushroom financial institutions which had put stress in the sector, but he couldn't change But they insist that you are paying the PPAs from uh, proceeds from so, ESLA. So imagine the, how the, much... They insist, is that correct? Why are you jumping from infrastructure to ESLA and back? I was on energy, you jumped to infrastructure. I've gone to infrastructure, you are jumping no, back no, to no, energy. I'm, I'm, Johnny, stay focused. No, I'll no, get no. There. Yeah, yeah, it's... I'll get there. Stay focused. I'm saying, if it's ESLA, mm. we are responsibly managing it. We have to borrow money when we came to shape the sector before ESLA. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? We have had to reshape the sector. And now we have put ourselves in a position where we are able to pay the take or pay contracts and give ourselves fiscal space to renegotiate. And the lights are on. Ghanaian industry, Ghanaian individuals, Ghanaian people are benefiting from electricity, which John Mahama couldn't give them. Mm. Now, John Mahama left us major bills, apart from the energy sector, the financial sector. Do you know how many roads? Schools we could have built with 13 billion rising to 23 billion. This is money we have had to reinvest in the economy because they messed up the financial sector. The roads he talks about, mm. how many of them did they pay for? The contracts they signed in a rush in mm. 2016. Cocoa sector, they ended up dumping all their road projects on the cocoa sector because they couldn't find money to pay in the main. They were under stricture 
from the IMF. You did, the, a, you did an audit. What did you find in the, the early days of your government? Finance, the Auditor General's report is there. Half of the expenditure, 11 billion that he investigated, mm. he only approved 5 billion. Mm. The Auditor General's report, audit report is there. Out of the 11 billion, they only approved 5 billion, which mm. points to another thing in their infrastructure crusade the lack of value for money. The overpriced and bloated infrastructure contracts mm. that we came to meet. So, governance is not only about shouting infrastructure and screaming uh, uh, slogan at the top of your voice. It's about calculated attempts. What are our calculated attempts? Our society. Mm -hmm. We need to create permanent jobs. Right. We need to industrialize. We need to move on from this informal economy where people have to go to town every day mm -hmm. to go and do something manual mm -hmm. before they can eat. Hand to mouth. We need to change that. How, and, how, how do we plan to do that? And that is what the government is saying, that this is all about jobs. And if it's about jobs, the key is industry and agri. Investments in industry and agri. Investments in roads. Mm. Investments in the health sector to ensure that you have a healthy population capable of dealing with this. Investments, of course, continue investments in education, mm. which we did even against... I'm, what I'm, I'm asking you my very final one. Mm. You've had a Sempa budget, mm. a Juma budget, mm. a Punto budget, mm. consolidating the gains. It all points to job creation. Yes. Somebody will ask, where are the jobs? Already, you have been told that we've created over 380,000 jobs in the formal sector, mm. <laughs> apart from other jobs in the informal sector in Agric and all that. So this debate currently, I want us to focus on the financial architecture mm. after COVID. Okay. The NDC doesn't get it. What don't they get? They don't get the figures. Mm. They don't have an understanding. That is why the former president, who couldn't manage himself mm. and lost a major election, mm -hmm. wants to come back into power and told the whole world that Ghana had run to take a rapid credit facility without even checking his facts. That rapid credit facility is a facility that had been made available and it was important and wise that one takes it. Because it is faster, better, and cheaper than the full four years thing he put us in under IMF, mm. where they couldn't even invest. The problem is that you run too quickly after three weeks. At the time he was talking about, 20 African countries had already accessed it. And it was important that we did, and smartly, because we needed it to make sure that we stabilize everything that we have. It's important. It's good money. Mm. So the wise, smart person will take that good but money. But we will pay back. Zero interest with no interest. Mm. With no interest. Mm. With no interest. So why wouldn't I take that good money and support my processes? Okay. And it didn't mean that the economy was bad pre-COVID. That's why we took that money. That is the understanding and distinction I want the former president to appreciate. That the economy was strong. That Mr. John Mahama should appreciate that by April 2019, mm. this team, Nanado, Dr. Baumia, Safuma Fo, the economic management team, had position and reposition this economy to the point that the IMF, to which they ran in 2014, have decided that we could manage our the, own the affairs. The government presents separate figures to the Both? IMF? Absolutely not. And it's been explained. Haven't you mm. seen the explanation? Mm. It's so sad. The NDC doesn't read. The NDC in a hurry, and they tell somebody they are snuggery. We deal with the international community, and we deal with them properly. Okay. We told them, we told them that financial sector, mm. energy sector payments, are going to be treated in a different approach mm. because these are problems we didn't expect to solve above the line within the frame okay. of our fiscal macro stability. Fi final they one. agreed final and they have told the whole world that mm. the NDC are lying final one to you. about those figures. On which balance sheets did you go to the IMF with? Um, was it for 2019 or the first quarter of 2020? What do you mean? The balance sheet. I mean, you go to the IMF with figures. So, I, when <laughs> this is, I don't understand this question. Balance okay. sheet. The important thing is that the IMF have confirmed mm. that they are comfortable with the figures they are working with. Okay. with they are totally comfortable, comfortable. because everything is above board. It's not just above board. Mm. We negotiated favorable terms with them. Okay. We have told them how we'll do our accounting, mm. particularly on the uh, 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 the other account. What do you call it? Oh, the payments account, mm. the the one which has a. <laughs> but let me move on. When you talk but, about but borrowing, allow, allow, when you talk about borrowing, some. I think you have when you talk about borrowing, let me land on that. When you talk about borrowing, mm. let the let not the NDC mm. 
happily clap their hands and talk about you didn't borrow, you were going to borrow and all that. It's not a magic word. They can't create the impression that we are going to borrow mm -hmm. because we told them that we wouldn't borrow. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the people of Ghana will up and say, MPP has borrowed, so you are out of power, give it back to mm -hmm. the edits. It doesn't work like that. Have you borrowed? Yes. We said you have to borrow responsibly in okay. order to grow your economy. Okay. And we have grown the economy consistently about 5% mm. mm. over the period. That's why the IMF says we are capable of running Thank the economy. You. And that is why we, are Ghana, Thank you. are Thank leading you. the international talks on restructuring it's the economy. It's only fair that we allow some You don't know what you're talking about. about. So, no, you started at 41, it's 53 now. You don't know what you're you, talking about. I, I, I'm giving you enough time. Sam, you take the final bite on this one. Uh, yeah, says you don't understand what you're talking about. The figures don't read. defeat you. IMF is in support. What are you saying? Well, I mean, the, there's a wise saying, a French saying, that he who the gods choose to kill, the first make mad. You've heard that French saying, right? I've heard that, but what does it mean in this context? <laughs> in this context, it means that even when you, the reality is being put to you, you won't see it. You would, you would absolutely... It's, it's, Others will call it the arrogance the of power. That your mama has been okay. proven to be a liar over and yeah, over yeah, again. That's the yeah, reality. Yeah, allow, allow Every him. time he yeah. mentions figures, he lies. Yeah, allow him, please. All right. Allow him. Thank you very much, sir. The IMF was clear that government, they disagreed with government in the way government chose to do its accounting. On the Joy News program, where the IMF country rep was called, mm -hmm. he made it clear that the IMF deals with several countries and has a standard for reporting. And that Ghana chose not to go with that standard. There's a reason why they so are. So why did they give us the money? There are reasons why. There are reasons why we have standards. No, credible. The rapid, the rapid credit facility mm. was given simply because at this point in time, you have a situation where the the world economy or, or world countries across the world are all seeking and grappling with challenges. Mm. And so it is more of compassion than meeting the real the real demands of but it. But it doesn't mean so, they, they should do things haphazardly. If they that's, disagree with our figures, they shouldn't have given That's why credit. they pointed it out on their website. That is why the IMF pointed out the disparity on their website. Mm. Okay? To state and let people know, let the world know that Ghana is doing something that's not right, that they don't agree with, but they are not going to punish the sins of the punish the children for the sins of the fathers. You understand me? Mm. That's one that's that's the first thing we need to do. Now, like I said, is, is trying very stringently. To drag in John Muhammad. He doesn't read. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay? But ultimately, ask him. It's about John Muhammad. John Muhammad's Cocoa Road audits. Mm. Yeah? Mm. He talked about the Cocoa Roads and said that we pushed everything to Cocoa Roads. Mm. And I'm happy that Justice Eric J. Baffour has mm. set a very high bar for causing financial loss to the state. Right. Tomorrow is very pregnant. Because when you see... Pregnant with what? Oh, it's very pregnant. Yeah, it shall deliver. Tomorrow. It shall pipeline. deliver. Because you see, at the end of the day, you see, the chair, you Boba, no? I buy a you the Boba, teacher, you the Boba. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's all you got about. But you, you see, have, you the bottom line... You can have used a girl proverb <laughs> to be safe. Oh, don't worry. You know why I'm saying that? You know why I'm saying that? You know why I'm saying that? There'll be enough The Cocoa Road Road Projects. Projects that were ninety eight percent complete. Oh please. please! The report is there. The other report is there. Please, ninety eight percent complete. Please. You halt those projects. Those roads have dilapidated. You spent ten million dollars. Banding argument. Ten million dollars of, 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 of Ghanaian taxpayers' money, mm -hmm. and you come back and you cannot find one road project under the Cocoa Road Project Initiative that was faulty. Not one. The Auditor General had to do to, 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 uh, <laughs> to raise some, some red flags. It was given to Please. Parliament. The Auditor General's report is mm. different from the government commissioned report okay. on Cocoa Roads. I'm speaking so about you, the, you, you the commission, you. The commission report <laughs> that the government of Ghana paid $10 million for mm. on the Cocoa Road sector. Mm. The, the road projects under the Cocoa Road initiative were not halted based on an Auditor General's so, so you are saying that the report so, was not worth it. The government commission report. Oh, was not worth it. tomorrow we will discover whether that is causing financial loss to the state or not. But just so that people know that when he talks about cocoa road and tries to rubbish it, mm. his government has actually hurt the cocoa farmers, and because of that, you have cocoa stuck in many communities that had been opened up by John Mama by those roads. And and just so that people know, they stopped all of them except the cocoa roads in Chibi. Now. He why, goes again. Why that? Ask him. Yeah, he goes cruise. again. He goes Things again. He goes it. again to say that John Muhammad did not fix Dumso. How laughable. 
and that and that John Muhammad signed PPEs that and they are paying for. I am challenging the Agwabing Asamoa mm. and the entire MPP machinery to mention one power plant, one, yeah, one. And last week I was on this platform mm. with a Japan Mesa, and I did the same thing. He couldn't mention one power plant mm. that John Muhammad signed the PPA for. That government of Ghana, mm. government of Nana Dodankwa Kufuado, has paid a dime for that we did not consume power from. One. They should name one, <laughs> one PPA, one I independent power producer, IPP. I don't have to do that. We are paying, they claim that we have, we have occasion loss. Mm. They are paying billions for nothing. I'm saying name one. If you have integrity in this government, if there's any man of integrity I in this government, to name one. they would respond they to this. To I am challenging them that, look, you are I the communications officer for your party. I'm not an officer. I'm a director. You are an officer. Whether you are a manager. He's a big man. Whether, <laughs> whether it is manager or CEO. No, no, so no, 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 the is a director. Refer to me properly. You are the communications director of Thank the NDP. Thank you. And Thank you, should, you. You, should, you lead the communications wing of the NDP. And I'm challenging you as the communications director of the NDP to name one power plant. That one power plant that John Mahama brought in as a PPA or signed a PPA for, the Mahama government signed a PPA for, that the Kufado government has paid for, that we have not consumed power from. None! We were able to pay back. They pay the PPAs. We are paid! Because they manage the s well. That's what he has. Manage what s well. The s We borrow the chief. Stabilize the sector. The argument he made. The argument he has been made here. That has been made by several other of his of his officers since mm. he's the director is that we've been they've been paying for ppas that they, no not just deputy directors <laughs> that, 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 that 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 they've been paying for ppas they've been paying for ppas mm. that were signed by john mahama that have no value to us and i'm challenging the entire communication director led by their communication director okay. to name one one power plant that they are paying the PPA for. Yeah, so he has no answer to it. He has it's no answer. He should, he, he should the, mention the energy. The energy for him to mention. debate is on. Why do I have to sit here and mention one PPA? I don't because you have nothing to say. The energy debate is on. Nothing to say. Let me continue. Some rubber for you. I want to make a point. Oh, oh, oh. I beg you. I beg you. We are paying for it. Control yourself. Control yourself. Control yourself. Control yourself. Council, please let him get his one minute. Control yourself. Control yourself. So you have the last minute. Yes. Unfortunately, I beg you. Now let me end with the financial sector. Yeah, you claim you spend. If you are on with that senior brother, you give him time. Oh, why? Yes. So you, you want me to say you are biased and unprofessional? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me end on the financial sector mm. thing. He claims he spent thirteen billion. Where? On who? Look. The let cleaner, me tell you something. The cleaner. Hey, let no, me tell real. you. That was let me real. tell you. Let me tell you what they are doing. Okay. Okay. What they are, are they giving doing? people who have their monies locked up. Okay. <laughs> in the banks, I've been given three options, and this is option one. You get your payment in 10 installments with six months intervals, which means it's going to take five years. And it's going to start from March 2021. And all of this is at 0% coupon rate. So you tell me you've spent 13 billion to save my money. <laughs> Where's my money? But some people are getting their money. They're getting 10,000. Chief, of, uh, uh, chief I have seven with some bonds. No, no. Oh. Listen, listen, chief. Don't insult mm. people and the pain they are going through. <laughs> okay, that's what this government is doing. Uh, you owe me, you, you claim you have spent 13 billion to mm. save my money. Mm. Where's the 13 billion? So give me my money. If I have a million cities sitting down in an investment in a financial mm. institution mm. that you unwittingly closed, many of these financial institutions did not need to have been closed down. You chose to close <laughs> them down. Okay. Now you are telling me mm. that you are going to start paying me my money at 0% interest rates starting over a five year period. Starting from March 2021, not this year. That would reduce the value of the money. Is that Absolutely. what you're saying? There's okay. a time value of money. The, the second, second option point? is that I should take a full discounting where I will lose 50% of the original money. Full discounting. I should lose 50%. So if I had 1 million, you give me only 500,000. The third option is partial discounting where I will take a part payment uh, in any number of installments less than 10 now and forfeiting up to between 10 to 50 percent of the entire sum and taking the other scheduled installments on their original schedule date where is the 13 billion she can't even get near 50 13 billion i thought some were being given also as part you get part of your money and then another half Chief, of nobody gone. has gotten more than twenty thousand ghana cities so somebody has got it nobody has got more than twenty thousand somebody cities. has got it you go and take you take my provident fund <laughs> you know how many businesses have their provident funds stock up people have worked for yeah. years they've gone on retirement in the past year their provident funds are stuck up mm. and provident funds that are worth 5 million Ghana cities you give them 20,000 
and tell them that you will start paying from March 2021 20, over five years at zero percent interest. So my How heartless can you be? My That's the 13 billion. Okay, my one minute. No, one minute. Where are one minute ago? Mm. Whoa. Dabby, Dabby, Dabby. No, no, you can't. You, 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 will, you have been given three years, five months. You've done nothing. You've done zilch. <laughs> No, but ah, is it Johnny, about shouting? You gave him eleven minutes. No, is it about Me, shouting? I have gotten only only you seven minutes. Up. So I can't have my one minute. No, you don't have one minute. He's, he's shouting. Why okay. is he shouting? No, no, no. Because I'm shouting. You I am passionate. I am passionate. Okay, it's not good. It's not good. You don't change the economy by yeah, but this is our AC National Communications Director of the NPP. He is also the MP for the Adentan Constituency in the Greater Accra Region, and Sam George Nati. Is uh, the member of parliament for the Ningo Pram Pram constituency in the Greater Accra region as well? Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.